team train on the track thought we were gone but you know that was so we back Yes, indeed. We are back here on The Phantom Show, and I am really excited, guys, because I've been wanting to get back at this for a while. Real life kind of got in the way a little bit, but I've gotten all that, that cleared through, and I'm ready to get back to it with some more awesome videos. So, let's go ahead and jump in. If you do follow the Facebook page, a couple of weeks ago I posted a picture of the items that I have here on the set, and I asked you to figure out what they had in common. It really wasn't that hard. What they have in common is that they're all types of physical media. Now, of course, today our media marketplace is going digital, but it didn't always used to be that way. It used to be that no matter what kind of media you wanted, whether you're wanting to listen to music, play computer games, play console games, watch movies, etc., uh, etc., et you had to have some kind of physical material. Heck, read books even. Now, physical media is still around. It's just not as prominent as it once was. So, And there are positives and negatives to that. I thought it'd be fun to look at both sides of it. So let's go ahead and jump in. That's right, kids. It used to be when you wanted to watch a new movie, you had to go to a store to pick it up. So let's start with the positives. A big one is obviously going to be cost and convenience. If you look at the assortment of items behind me, you would need 10 different pieces of technology to be able to use all these things. Nowadays, you can access all of these things in one piece of technology, whether it's a smartphone, a PC, an iPad, or a smart TV, but they all can do it all. That is really, really cool because it makes it a lot more convenient than having to find a whole bunch of different pieces of technology. Back in the 90s, if you had, you know, you remember we had the TV, below the TV, you probably had two game consoles. Uh, there was a VCR there, and then when you went out, you had a Discman, maybe you still had a Walkman, you had a Game Boy. There was just a lot of stuff to lug around, and you know you had to lug around your tapes to listen to on your Walkman, your CDs for your Discman, or you got it. I'm sure we all remember throwing a bunch of video games in our backpack and taking them to our friend's house. It was work to be able to play all that stuff and carry it all around and access it when needed. So now that everything's gone digital, it is absolutely awesome. Friend calls you up, hey man, I downloaded the new Call of Duty game, come on over, let's play. All you gotta do is hop in your car and go. You don't need to grab a controller, none of that. All you do, hop in your car and go. A lot easier than it used to be. So big, big bonus is convenience. No discs, no cassettes, nothing to carry around. Just all your music right there. Positive number two, accessibility. Here is a DVD copy of Jurassic World, which means that I can pull, put this into any DVD player and it's gonna play Jurassic World. But what happens if I go to put in a DVD player at some point, I look at the back and, oh crap, this thing is scratched to death. That DVD player is not gonna play this disc. Conversely, if I download the movie Jurassic World, I have access to it on my iPad, uh, my smartphone, my smart TV. It doesn't matter whether I'm watching it two weeks from now, two months from now, or even two years from now, I can watch the video whenever I want to and the quality will still be 100%. Unlike a disc getting scratched or a cartridge getting broken or a tape getting ripped, there is no degradation with digital media and that is absolutely awesome. And the other thing about that is you never have to replace your stuff. How many times did you buy a movie on DVD? Did you buy it on Blu-ray? Did you buy it on VHS to keep up with the technology? Not needed anymore. You buy it once, you can watch it across all of your technology whenever you want to. Pretty cool. Surely we all remember how much this used to suck. All right, we've talked about all the good stuff, now let's talk about some not so good stuff. So when you're talking about negatives, when it comes to digital media, one of them is accessibility. What am I talking about? Well, it's pretty simple. Here I have a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for Sega Genesis. Great game, obviously one of the best games of all time. With this cartridge, anytime I have a Sega Genesis TV and electricity, I can play this game. Anytime I want to, day or night, any time of the year, it doesn't matter. Now, if you buy something digitally, you keep access to it. Now, I'm sure most of us, though, don't necessarily want to buy all of the movies we like or all of the video games we like for things like that. So sometimes, if you, if you like a movie, let's say it comes on Netflix, that's awesome, but it's only gonna stay there for a couple of months until it rotates off and something new comes on. Now there are benefits there because it keeps things fresh and they get to change up their movies and things like that, but it doesn't give you consistent access to a movie that you may love. So if there are movies you truly duly love, <coughs> Star Wars, mm, sorry, it's in my throat there. Uh, you're gonna wanna get physical copies so you can indeed watch them in time, or at least bring the download digital copies again so you have that access. Here's another negative. There's not necessarily a guarantee. And what I mean by that is, and this hasn't happened yet on a major scale, but it's probably going to at some point in time. If a digital media company were to go to business, you would potentially lose access to all your media. So let's say you've purchased 100 movies and 50 games through the service, and the service declares bankruptcy and you lose access to your stuff. 
It'll be like you buy 50 DVDs at Dollar General and Dollar General declares bankruptcy and then they send somebody to your house to take all those DVDs back and they don't give you a penny in compensation for it. That's kind of the reality of digital media and like I said, that hasn't happened on a grand scale yet so there hasn't been a lot of you know, legal wrangling for lack of a better term that has happened there but there's a lot of questions on, on the legality of that and how it might all plan out because in the digital marketplace there's a big big question of how much do you really own your stuff so it'll be really interesting to see how that pans out when the time comes but that's definitely a concern when you're talking about digital media imagine you've downloaded and paid for 100 games you log on one day to play them and you see this ouch Another negative with digital media is that you don't always get all of the bells and whistles that you do with physical media. For example, you buy a Blu-ray of your favorite movie and it comes with six hours of special features. Some digital versions include that content, not all of them do. If you like video games, you can buy collector's editions, which are physical editions that include a lot of things that a digital edition just would not have. Now, of course, a digital edition can include bonus game content and, and DLC and that kind of thing but it can't include any of the physical items that come along with a collector's edition. So for most of us, if you want the, the real deal, full package, everything included, physical media is still the way to go. I and mean, in part, some of it is a bit of a comfort thing too. And it's, it's sort of based on, on the era that you grew up in. So for me, I enjoy <clears throat> going to a store and looking at physical DVD cases, physical game cases. I used to like opening them up and reading the manuals. Of course, most of them don't have manuals anymore, but I just like holding it in my hand and, and kind of making a connection with it that way versus clicking a button and downloading it. Now, of course, your mileage may vary. I'm sure for most younger people, they just download and go. But for me, I still have a bit of a connection to the physical product. Again, that's how I grew up. So it's kind of stayed with me through the years. There is just something nice about a game store. And this discussion would of course not be complete without referencing a couple things that while they are physical media, they're also digital media in a sense as well. What am I talking about? Pretty simple. Memory cards and flash drives. Now, these guys aren't around too much anymore, though they still exist. These guys, if you're into digital photography and things like that, you know all about these because most high-end digital uh, cameras do take these kind of memory cards. So they're still floating around. These things have largely been supplanted by document sharing websites, that kind of thing, uh, Dropbox, Scribd, etc., etc. So they're not used as much. But when these things came in, it was sort of a, we hadn't hit the full digital transition yet, but these were considered better than the physical media you see behind me for two reasons. Number one, they could hold more data. Okay, so for example, this is, it's actually a four gigabyte drive, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you look at all of the things you have behind me, it could all fit on this single drive. So that's pretty cool. Another thing about this is although they're physical objects and they are subject to damage, as you can see, they're a lot smaller and the build quality is a lot better. So they won't scratch, break, crack, etc., as easily as some of these items you see behind me. So unfortunately, they're known as virus carriers and things like that these days. So they're not as common as they used to be, but they were a nice go between when they existed to carry a bunch of data whether it have, and have a whole bag full of discs, CDs, what have you. So I'm kind of partial to flash drives because I think they still work great when you need them. But again, everything's going digital now, so probably in a few years, we're not going to have these around anymore either. We certainly have come a long way since the floppy disk, or as it's known to younger generations, the save button. And that will conclude our episode on physical media. Even though things are going digital these days, I strongly encourage you to hold on to your physical media if for no other reason than historical purposes. You know, because hey, it's kind of fun to pull one of these out for somebody who's under the age of 20 and say, hey kids, before we had Spotify, this is how we had to listen to music. That'll wrap this episode up. I do thank you for watching. My next two episodes will be video reviews of recent TV shows, Picard and Lego Masters. And my next full episode is gonna be on the X-Files. So as always guys, thanks for watching. There's plenty of good stuff up ahead.